2015 mug. One of the things I, I like about the mug meetings is when we have two presentations. So uh, it seems like we kind of got away from it the last several months, uh, but I think it's always good to try to have uh, two, two different, at least two different things going on at the mug meetings uh, because. This is a fantastic presentation on the Beagle Bone, but it, you know, if, if that's not what you're interested in, it's, it'd be nice to have something else at the meeting that you're interested in. So we usually try to do like an hour, hour and 15 minute meeting, and a 15 or 20 minute meeting. So tonight, uh, I'm just gonna spend 15 or 20 minutes on, uh, on time. I've got, a, I've got my notes here. <laughs> Uh, time is ticking now. Uh, but what I what I want to point out is we want we want other people to come up and give 15 minute presentations on something. Uh, it doesn't have to be a huge presentation. It doesn't have to have a lot of time put into preparation. Um, I, I put I, you know, I wrote up some notes on how I use NTP. That's what I want to talk about tonight. This is not a huge in depth. Uh, conversation about NTP. I, I don't know the ins and outs of the protocol. <laughs> I just know how I use it, and and we want to do more presentations like this. I think for a you know 15 or 20 minute thing. So you know, maybe you're not prepared to give an hour and 15 minute talk, but maybe there's a 15 minute talk inside you that you'd like to give. So uh, I don't know what our presentation is going to be for April, but maybe one of you would like to volunteer for the for the short presentation. Um, Everybody got, has a presentation inside of them. Everybody does. Everybody does. They it's dying to it. get out. They you just, just got to let it out. <laughs> they, just, they just don't know how. It doesn't take a great deal of preparation, uh, as, as I'll demonstrate tonight. <laughs> a lot of time. Yeah, but you know it all. No, since <laughs> we pretty much got I'm roped in trouble into, when I think I know it yeah. all. No, Jim actually got roped into this uh, pretty much last minute where you said, oh, what's our second act? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, and or he did volunteer. Yes, yes, he did. Yeah. And so, uh, I think I think he volunteered in the sense of, I, yeah, I might in the future talk about NTP. And we said, well, what about this month? Did I say I was going to go into this month? Yeah. You, uh, you have to kind of, uh, you know, I'm going to turn kind of sideways here so I can see the screen. I, I, uh, Gotten to the age where I need I, I need uh, progressive lens glasses, mm -hmm. and I've had them for I've had them for like four or five years. Saturday I broke my glasses, so I've gone back to wearing an old pair of normal glasses. Computer monitors are at the wrong distance. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yes, absolutely. I can at my monitor at my desk at home. It's it's terrible. I've got a nice big thirty inch monitor. It's great, but it's at such a distance that with my glasses on. It's too close. With my glasses off, it's too far. Uh -oh. I, I went to the eye doctor yesterday. I got a new pair of orders. I won't see him for a week. That's what reading glasses. Better make a fast trip to the uh, optometrist. I, I already took care of it. But uh, it's going to be like a week before my new glasses come. And I'm dying here. I actually pulled the monitor way up close to the desk so there's just enough room for the keyboard and the monitor. And then I lean in and I, and I can I wow. try to get some work done. But now your neck's out of joint, so. <laughs> yeah, believe me, I feel it. It's yeah. been like four days and it's driving me crazy. But like tonight, I cannot see my screen here with my glasses on, and I won't be able to see the screen up there with my glasses off. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of screwed. But we're gonna, we're gonna give it a try anyhow. Uh, let's see. Just, uh, can't see what I'm doing Just increase the font size really large, and you'll see what you're typing. Okay. Um, Zons, let's see. I'm going to try and just work off that screen. Okay, so time, right? We did a time shift uh, sun, Sunday morning at 2 a.m. We're still feeling it. Yep, 2 a.m. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. for a week. No problem. Um, those generally don't bother me this year. Change uh, it So in, in Unix and Linux, we've had commands to deal with date and time. Uh, in fact, it's the same command. So we've always had the date command, right? You know, you can use date. It'll tell you the current date. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how accurate that is. But I'm going to use the date. Uh, I'm going uh, well, to do a couple things. I 
want to, uh, when I play with time, I like to watch what it's doing. So I keep that thing running so I can see, you know, every second it's ticking away. All right. Now, for the purposes of this demonstration, I need to make my time wrong. That's pretty close because I had it set up with the NTP. So we're going to do a date and uh, let's, let's see. Uh, well, first off, the date command. I'm not quite sure who came up with this uh, syntax, right? It's month, month, day, day, hour, hour, minute, minute. Optionally, you can do the century and the year and then point seconds. All right, well, I'm just going to change the date, or change the time rather to. Uh, uh, what is today? Today is uh, 0310. Uh, it thinks it's uh, 8, so I'm going to make it like uh, 2025. Okay. So now you see over here, mm -hmm. we jumped from 2018 to 2025. So my system is off by, uh, what, 7 minutes? A little less than 7 minutes? Right? So one way to fix it would be to just run the date command again. You, you know, you look at your phone or you, you go by some time source, maybe the clock on the wall, and you use the date command and you try to get it close. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is using the NTP date program. It's just a client uh, application that will set the, set the uh, NTP data set deprecated. You're now supposed to query the NTP. Um, Things you use, but that's what this does. NTP date will query. Yeah, but you use. I think it's NTP or NTPD with the minus Q option. Yeah. Okay. We get to that. Okay. Uh, so the NTP date command, uh, you can install that with uh, apt-get. So it would be apt-get install NTP date. I don't need to do that because I've already installed it. That's how I would install it on a Debian-based or Ubuntu-based system. Uh, so I'm going to use the program to go query the time. Date. Uh, I like to do dash V because it makes it verbose. Dash Q. And I'm going to query a time server. And I'll talk a little bit more about time servers in just a minute. But a good one is uh, US pool org. Uh, NTP .org. That's right. And uh, I didn't even look to see if I've got an internet connection, but I assume I do. Yeah, okay, so that ran uh, uh, ran the command against this server, uh, 0.us.pool.np.org. And if you do a, a dig on, uh, on that server name, it's actually four IP addresses come up. So it goes out and it hits all four of those servers. And you can see here, let me just down just a little bit. So it hits these four servers, uh, tells me a little bit about the, the type of uh, time server they are, and this one here is a Stratum 1, and I, I don't know much about Stratum, uh, the 1s, 2s, and 3s, but I think the Stratum 1 is the more accurate, right? uh, Stratum 2, and you can have Stratum 3 and Stratum 4. Uh, anyway, Stratum, it's got one server that's a Stratum 1, so that's what it picked. Uh, as my time server, and I'm off by minus 398.698075 seconds. So 398, that's uh, About six seven, less seven, than seven, seven minutes. Six right? and a half minutes, yeah. Yeah, which is about what we guessed when I, when I changed it from um, uh, eight, 18 to 825. It was 818 in some seconds. Anyway, so uh, because I did the queue, it just queried it. It didn't set my time. You notice my clock is still wrong. Still uh, 8.28, in real life it's like 8.21. Uh, but it, it did tell me that my clock is off by almost 400 seconds. Uh, so that's interesting to know. So it's really simple to then uh, set my time with this command. I just take off the queue and I just run the command. I'm gonna leave the dash V on there for verbose just so it tells us what it's doing. But if you watch the the, uh, the time over scrolling on the left, uh, at some point it's going to jump. 
2022. See, it jumped. It did change my clock, and now we're pretty close to accurate. The thing is, this just set the time. It doesn't keep the time synchronized. It just set the time. So if I assume the clock in my computer is accurate, which it seems to me like no clocks in any computers are ever accurate, um, it's going to stay close. Right? So anyway, that's, that's how you can just, on a one-time deal, that's how you can go set your time. What's more interesting to me is making sure that my servers, especially my servers, stay in sync. You ever, I, I've got a, a rack in a data center with a whole bunch of servers in it. And you ever go look at like log files to try to figure out what's going on and you've got a bunch of servers and the clocks are all different. <laughs> and, and you look at it in like syslog or you know, bar log messages or something and you don't know what time something happened because the clock's wrong. It's really nice to keep the clock synchronized. So that's what I use NTP for. So I showed you NTP date. Uh, the other thing you can install is uh, uh, NTP. And it's app get install NTP. Right? Uh, I won't do it because I already do have it installed. Now, NTP is, a, is both a client and a server, and it runs as a daemon. Uh, it's a client in that it will go out and query a server to get a time, and it'll set the time on your system. It's a server in that you can configure other machines in your network to query your, your main machine as, as its time server. Uh, some people will just set up all of their machines to go out and query, uh, like, like pool.ntp.org. I like to have a time server in my cabinet and all my machines sync to that. I'm more interested in all my machines being the same to some known standard uh, than I am with all of them being exact with the world. I mean, I could be off by milliseconds. I really don't care as long as they're, they're really close uh, with, with amongst themselves. So I set up my own time server in my rack, and uh, everybody syncs to that. Okay. So okay. the NTP daemon, that's uh, when you install NTP, that's what you get, the NTP daemon. Along with the NTP daemon comes a config file. Uh, at the ntp.conf. I don't know about you guys with the, the newer releases of Ubuntu. I really miss a border on my windows. Because uh, to me, you know, when it just sort of goes right up to the edge, it's like uh, it's like those infinity pools in California where the water goes right up to the edge and then there's like the rest of Los Angeles. <laughs> Nothing in between. Uh, it, it drives me nuts. Like, I can't see I can't see where one starts and the other stops. That's a point there. <coughs> anyway, here's the config file for NTP. It's got a few important things in here. Uh, first thing I think that's very important is the servers. Uh, in this case, we're uh, we're going to hit. Uh, this is the file that comes from Ubuntu. It's configured by uh, the Ubuntu package uh, developers, and they're going to a set of servers that are uh, part of the NTP pool, uh, but prefixed with Ubuntu. So zero.ubuntu.pool.ntp.org and so on. And then there's a fallback, just ntp.ubuntu.com, if one of those uh, ntp.org servers isn't accessible. So that's, uh, that's the servers we're going to hit. All right? Uh, another important thing is the drift file. That keeps track of uh, how far off your clock is uh, and uh, helps it in figuring out the algorithm to use to keep your clock synchronized. Because you don't want to just every so often just change your clock. You want it to, you want it to be a gradual thing. You, you never want it to get more than a few milliseconds out of sync, uh, but to get it back in sync, you want it to, to you, you want to cause the clock to stay in sync instead of allowing it to get out. And there's things you can do with the clock that will, that will I think, speed up and slow down the clock and, and keep it in sync. But anyway, the drift file is part of that. Uh, there's some statistics and other things I don't know much about. Um, there's also some permissions and whether we want to do, um, uh, I think uh, the dash four and dash six are, I think, for IPv4 and IPv6. 
There's also NTP versions. Uh, I think there's NTP version three and NTP version four. You can specify. Um, anyway, there's some restrict things, so you can, you can say who's allowed to talk to me. Uh, one of the things that you can do is, uh, as a server, it can broadcast to your network that it is an NTP server, and your clients can listen for those broadcasts, so that you don't have to configure them specifically to talk to a server. It'll it, uh, they'll pick up that broadcast message and know that. That's who the server is, and then they'll start communicating with that. Uh, anyway, that's the config file. All right, it's real simple to start. Service MVP start. And now it's running. So now it's going to uh, keep in sync. We're even if I. Uh, And now, after some period of time, it will sync back up. Um, it's sometimes interesting to know exactly when that's going to happen, uh, but over time, it will it will correct itself. Uh, but anyway, while we're while we're watching for that to do its thing, um, let's talk a little bit about the time servers. Uh, the time servers that I showed you, the, uh, the pool, pool.ntp.org, uh, there's a whole nice website. There's uh, let's see. this is the ntp.org site. Um, they've got all these servers out there, so we can go to North America. There's all these North America servers within North America. Is countries. Uh, and they've seen a, a, a rise in the NTP servers that are being put online um, in the middle of 2007. Uh, they had quite a jump, a whole lot more servers um, came online. Uh, and there's the, the four servers I was talking about, the 0, 1, 2, and 3. May I have your attention, please? The time is now 8.30, and the library will be closing in 30 minutes at 9 o'clock. Please be advised that the Internet will shut down 10 minutes before closing. Thank you. Uh, anyway, um, there are uh, 604, 605 IPv, IPv4 NTP servers in the United States. Uh, there's 198 IPv6. Uh, you can see uh, three years ago there was only 92, so that's that's climbing nicely. Uh, anybody can be part of this pool. Uh, I can. Uh, there's there's cards you can get to put in a computer to be a time server that work off the off a radio signal. I think. Uh, there's USB USB dongle things you can plug in that will capture the time off a radio signal. And then, you, with that, you can become part of the uh, part of the pool. Uh, if you want to contribute to that, 
Uh, they really would like you to be uh, serious about it if you want to do it. Make sure that if you're gonna if you're gonna be part of the pool, you intend to stay part of the pool for a long period of time. They really don't want people coming and going. Uh, because what happens is if somebody's part of the pool, um, uh, if you're part of the pool, somebody could. I mean, I, I think the smart thing is to just pick one of these generic names. But if I publish myself as part of the pool, they can point directly at my server. For Actually, if you use the real generic one without a number in front of it, you get even more generic. Uh, does that work if I just yes. put the us.pool that Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's go back and see if. Uh, no, time is still off. See if my clock uh, synchronized yet. 20, 30. Nope. No, it hasn't synchronized yet. Well over time. Um, if uh, depending on how far out the time is, it will either use the uh, set time of day function in the in the C library or the adjust time uh, function. I think it's less than. I found different conflicting answers to this. And one place it says if it's less than 128 milliseconds, it'll use the adjust time to uh, slowly adjust the time back to being exact. Uh, if it's more than 128 milliseconds, it'll just use the set time of day to, to set it. Um, anyway, this is uh, this is how I do it. I set up my servers uh, in my data center to all point to one of my servers, and that one server points to uh, the pool of servers. In, in my case, I'm using yeah, the Ubuntu pool of server. So, who else is using NTP? Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, you know what um, I think for servers, it makes uh, super sense to do it, uh, yeah. even on a, on a desktop. You know, you might as well keep yeah. your time synchronized, right? Um, I, I, I've been using it for a long time. I remember years ago, years and years ago, there used to be a, 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 a you could use your modem to dial up a number, <laughs> and it would, it would, uh, uh, it, the modem would connect, and all it would do, the, the thing on the other end would just keep spitting back time. Anybody remember seeing that? Yes. Yeah, the the yeah, he went to the Naval Observatory. Yeah, it was NIST. Yeah, NIST was doing it. Yep. And they just spit back, it's like once a second, I think, it would spit the spit the time back, and it would just be this certain number of characters. And the, the program on Unix at the time could mm -hmm. tell the time between characters. I think to know, there was something it could tell to know how far away the time server was and how long it would take. And it was like 300 baud or something ridiculous. It could tell how long it should take for those characters to arrive, and that's how it would know how much to adjust the time by from what the answer it got. Because by the time you see the answer, you're already delaying it, right? It was pretty cool. Yeah, that's still the way well, NTP works. You play ping pong with the server. Is that right? Yeah, every, uh, which is one reason why they deprecated the NTP date, because it was a very inefficient uh, method, so they didn't like the bandwidth it was taking. Really? So it listens on port 123. I wonder if we could just do a net cat on, on that on 123 and just watch the, I don't know, net cat well enough. What's your min and max setting for the NTP computer? You watch and say what time you think it is and, yeah. and tell. Then it looks at its watch and says, I think it's this time. Yeah. And it picks the, it assumes by default that it's equal transit time both right, ways. Right. So it matches up to half port 123 and then it's going to find filter. Gradually yeah. Yeah, until it, it gets it perfect. Let's see, we still haven't uh, synced yet, but I'm not, I'm not that worried about it. It will sync over time. Uh, any questions? Maybe we just your minute, man. Are you ready? Is it time for dinner? Let's ask. Uh, okay, so that's our, uh, our short 15 minute presentation for tonight. Uh, and I highly encourage anybody to uh, also come up with a, a small presentation and give it uh, at one of the upcoming meetings. All right? Thank you.